Hi there. Um, we come to the major book review in the series on South African uh, conflict. And it's this book. Special Forces, The Men Speak by Jonathan Pittaway. And this is in the series that he has done about the specialised and elite units such as the uh, Rhodesian SAS and the Salute Scouts which we've already reviewed. And this is the long awaited one on the South African Special Forces. It was uh, announced in April of this year, the, the publication, and I ordered my copy and uh, it was printed in Singapore. So I had to go by sea to South Africa. There was all the COVID, the Chinese plague, etc. Um, caused problems. Anyway, a um, couple of weeks ago, it finally arrived and um, I've been poring over it ever since. The book, uh, covers the uh, complete history of special operations by South African units. Um, really, uh, it goes back in history, but the major part would be World War II. Um, it's interesting to note that the term commando, which is used by many of the world's special units, um, is a Borough term um, fr from um, the, uh, the war, the Borough war. Um, that was the units that the uh, Afrikaners uh, formed. So it, it covers all that and their contribution to things like the Long Range Desert Group and so on. But then um, the, the main part is um, the, the more modern with the Reconnaissance Commander. And the book really um, profits from having uh, major sections of it written by uh, Jan Breitenbach, who was the founder of uh, South African Special Forces. And he served, uh, he, he was South African, but he came over to the UK and he served in um, a couple of units, including the Fleet Air Arm, then went back to South Africa and joined the Parabats. And he had the idea while uh, serving there uh, of forming um, an SAS type unit. That's his own words, he wanted an SAS type unit. And he pushed the idea and then one day um, he was introduced to Dudley Coventry, who was the uh, commanding officer of the um, Rhodesian SAS and was on a visit to South Africa as a consultant. And he'd been asked to um, really um, give his ideas on how this should be done. And he had suggested Utsong uh, training area in the Cape as being the as, uh, most suitable place as the base. And um, he met um, uh, Jan Breitenbach and uh, it was decided that a nucleus of guys, mainly from the Parabats, uh, but with a couple of other guys, would go down and train in Rhodesia. So they did that. Their introduction was uh, a convivial evening in the Wing Stagger, which is the the All Ranks Bar that um, the SAS had, and then training began. And it covered all aspects: uh, sabre operations in in the uh, Land Rovers, um, uh, canoeing, uh, airborne operations, uh, long range signals, all all the skills and all the um, techniques and tactics of uh, uh, special forces and then uh, they were put through uh, selection and most of the guys passed um, the, the ones who didn't pass were the, the guys who hadn't come from Parabats uh, and then they did uh, an escape and invasion exercise as well so they took all that knowledge back to South Africa um, and set up the base at Utsong uh, and started the unit so um, at the time it was mainly concentrated on border operations uh, uh, southwest africa uh, angola border area um, 
Common and Breitenbach, uh, he, he does several sections in the book and it, it, he is very, very adamant about um, his views. And uh, originally it was General Lou who um, backed him in this, but when he uh, retired and was replaced by General Lewis, then uh, things started going bad in uh, Breitenbach's opinion. And uh, he eventually um, was um, moved out of the unit. And his opposition was on several several fronts. And, and the first was um, they planned to move from Utsan in the Cape to uh, Durban. And there was a, an old whaling station at the Bluff. And that became the headquarters for the, the record commander. And uh, Brainback um, opposed this. He said it wasn't suitable. It was right in the middle of a town. Um, and uh, didn't have the facilities and so on for running the different types of training. Secondly, the expansion of um, from um, the original one commando uh, into uh, uh, one, four, and five commando, uh, and, and two was the uh, citizen force unit already uh, in existence. Uh, he, he thought it, it should all be contained within the one commando and just have different branches of it. Um, and then uh, finally, he was totally opposed to um, the uh, Project Barnacle, which became the CCB, which was the um, covert operations, um, assassinations and um, dirty tricks that were under the umbrella of special forces but he thought was not really um, the task of, of the special forces and he, th he thought it tarnished the name so he was moved and he went to um, 3 2 battalion and in his own words he turned it from a bunch of criminals into an elite infantry slash special force unit uh, he also went back to um, the Para Brigade and was instrumental in forming the Pathfinders, which uh, the first um, commanding officer was uh, a chap from 22 SAS and the uh, Sergeant Major was Pete McLeish, also from 22 SAS and Rhodesian SAS. Uh, the book... Uh, I think it's the the biggest of the, of the series. It, it, it's certainly weighty, and it covers many many aspects. Uh, we've mentioned Hunter Group. There's a big section on that. Um, yeah, Jan Breitenbach has a, another couple of sections. Uh, one is where they started doing early operations in early 1974 with the Rhodesians. Uh, they went down there. Um, did a little bit of um, uh, uh, initial um, marrying up training and then deployed in the Macombe area um, operations, long range reconnaissance and OPs in Mozambique and it got them um, really a, a wealth of hands on experience including um, contacts. Uh, an another a chapter is written by uh, Daryl De Beer, who um, was one of the original members of the unit and uh, became the expert on uh, survival, bushcraft and tracking. And he echoes um, really what um, Commandant Breitenbach um, says and he also thinks that the expansion was too much. Uh, he, he wanted to keep it uh, a tight unit. Uh, Jimmy uh, Oberholzer uh, has a couple of sections in the book uh, recounting his career where he started as a national service um, soldier on call up, uh, joined the Parabats, went through the training, got his wings and then one day was called into the office. Uh, this was in, he joined in 1970 and was there for a couple of years and then uh, was called into the office and there was um, Jan Breitenbach, uh, who invited him to be part of the new unit he was setting up. Uh, so he joined the permanent force and um, 
uh, had a, an illustrious career in um, in the recce, um, becoming um, uh, a very very well respected and senior um, uh, warrant officer. Uh, one one of the sections he, he talks about is uh, going on the, the diving course at Simmonstown with the Navy, and how the Navy really um, uh, resented that army guys were getting involved in diving and made their life very very difficult um, some of the training was all in cold water um, obstacle courses and so on before they even got into uh, the diving phase very very difficult and then uh, going back to the parabats to do the free fall course uh, and it became a qualified uh, free fall uh, he also deployed to Macombe. He, he was on the original deployment. Uh, and in another section, um, Jimmy discusses um, uh, a bridge sabotage attack they did in Angola, um, uh, um, a waterborne attack um, led by uh, John Murphy. And John Murphy was an American former uh, Marine officer, US Marine officer who had joined the uh, SAS in Rhodesia, then into the Salu Scouts, and then um, I joined the, the Recuse. And the operation was planned by Bert Saxe, who was also from um, SAS and Salu Scouts. Uh, another section which puts the other point of view, Neil Creel, who was the first um, commanding officer of um, Project Barnacle, the covert operations he, he had come from Salu Scouts as well recruited a lot of Rhodesians into it and he talks about um, his side of the story and, and what they got up to um, Anton Roo uh, talks about operational medic um, deployments um, and the, the book it, it's got so much um, that in a review really we can only touch on a few of them. Uh, it it really it it um, it split into decades. So um, from World War Two, the fifties, sixties, seventies, eighties, which is a big long one. That's when they were really um, fighting on uh, several fronts. Then the nineties, then ninety four, when the ANC uh, came into power and things changed um, the the army hid the uh, the recce's uh, within the airborne forces uh, re, re, um, give them different um, cover uh, numbering system then they were reconstituted as um, the special forces and uh, really there's just two regiments four and five were left and the book goes into the more modern things, uh, including operate, um, exercise Cape Griffin uh, down in the Cape area with uh, 22 SAS. Uh, it goes into that in detail. And also uh, the deployments in, in the DRC and other African countries, um, close protection of um, various uh, diplomats, South African diplomats and so on. The book has the nominal role of all the operators and um, the uh, the decorations and so on. It, it's a terrific book, very heavily illustrated, lots of colour, photographs, lots of memorabilia, very unique stuff, uh, badges, um, uh, lesson plans, insignia photographs of operators, equipment and so on. It's, it's a fantastic book. Uh, there's really only one place to get it. Uh, you have to order from Durban. I'll put the link, obviously. Uh, eventually, it may come on to, uh, to Amazon. If it does, I'll, I'll uh, update it. Uh, if you're interested in the subject, then this is the book. All the, all the books re reviewed so far, um, they've, they've been terrific. This book, as it, its title is, The Men Speak, and it, it is the first hand. Sometimes they don't all agree. Um, 
which is is is, is to be expected, but it, it really is, and particularly the material from the, the founder, uh, Commandant Breitenbach, who really is kind of the David Sterling of South African Special Forces, and it, it's worth it just for that.